Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. Exploring a lake, the diver discovered a giant monster on the bottom of it. The only solution he sees is to use a cow as a bait to catch the monster. Today we will recap the story of the 1999 movie Lake Placid. The film opens with an aerial view of the lake. It then switches to an extended underwater view of it. The camera cuts to a fish and game officer and a county sheriff in a small motored boat on the lake. The fish and game officer is preparing to dive. The sheriff complains about how fish and game officers have little regard for county sheriffs. The FGO dives by falling backwards. He swims till he finds a nest. He sees a few startled turtles emerge from the thickets around the nest. A crocodile sneaks up on him. He struggles to stay above the water and get the sheriff's attention, but looks the other way while listening to the radio. He eventually gets his attention. But by then, the damage has been done. The unknown animal in the water had gone away with more than half of the FGO's body. The sheriff is obviously disgusted and shocked by what he sees. We later know that the name of the FGO was Matt Lawson. The next scene takes place in a museum in New York. Kevin requests the attention of Kelly Scott, a historical paleontologist. Later we see Kelly breathing theatrically in an office. Myra, her colleague, walks in and asks her what she is doing. Kelly tells her that she is meditating. Myra tells Kelly that she needs to take long, deep breaths instead. Kelly then tells Myra that Kevin broke up with her, but Myra already knows about it for some reason. At first, Kelly is surprised that her friend already knows about the drama in her personal life. But soon, hearing her friend's hesitant tone, Kelly realizes that the man has been cheating on her with Myra this whole time. Myra tries to justify herself saying that she had an affair with Kevin even before Kelly was in sight. They thought it was all over then and parted their ways, but now they decided to get back together. Kelly feels humiliated and insulted. By the end of the conversation, she manages to get Myra to admit that Kevin broke up with Kelly to be with her. Kelly feels betrayed by this. Back in Maine, Jack Wells, another fish and game officer, arrives to look at Matt Lawson's body. He is received by Sheriff Hank Kyo. Right away, Jack assumes that it is a bear attack. When Hank tells him that it happened in the water, he sarcastically suggests that it's a beaver. However, he doesn't look so glum after he sees what remains of Officer Lawson. At the museum, Kelly calms herself down and gets back to work. Kevin enters her office. Kelly showers the man with sarcastic comments about his personal life and hints that Kevin is better off leaving her alone. However, the man remains calm and tells her about the accident with Matt Lawson that occurred in Maine. The tooth found in the body is very similar to a dinosaur tooth. So, Kevin believes that Kelly should go to Maine and conduct paleontological research there. Kelly isn't a field researcher, so it's not wise to send her on a mission like that. The girl realizes that it is her rival Myra who arranged this business trip for her. Enraged, Kelly makes several arguments against the trip, but Kevin doesn't listen to her. Still distraught, she flies to Maine. She is received by Sheriff Keo at the morgue. Kelly didn't expect that she would have to visit the morgue for paleontological research. But the girl doesn't lose her composure and follows the sheriff. The mortuary technician shows her the tooth extracted from the body of Officer Lawson. She declares that it is the tooth of an unknown reptile that is still alive on the earth now. Kelly requests to see the body, and Hank tries to talk her out of it, but she insists. She pulls back the covering and turns away in horror. Hank tells her that the attack lasted 8 to 10 seconds when she asks. She then requests to see the lake. The next scene shows Hank and Kelly packing stuff into the back of an SUV. He tells her that nobody else lives within 25 miles of the lake except an old couple. He also adds that a few teenagers skinny dip in the lake, but none have disappeared. Kelly sees a gun as Hank closes the trunk and isn't too impressed. Jack comes around at this moment. Hank sarcastically declares that a museum in New York has sent someone to save them. They get introduced and Jack tries to dissuade Kelly from going to the lake with them, but the girl is relentless. Resenting her ex, Kelly is stubborn and decides to go through with it. She promises her companions that she won't break safety rules so she wouldn't create any unnecessary problems for them. At this point, a woman walks up to them and asks if the rumors about a monster in Black Lake are true. Sheriff Keo skillfully plays down the situation and allays her fears. The three of them visit the house of the old couple that lives in a house by the lake. The lady tells them over snacks that her husband has passed away, but the police don't know anything about it. When they ask her how his life ended, she says she ended his suffering because he was constantly sick and begged her to help him do it. The police don't take the old lady seriously. Back at the lake, Kelly learns that they will be living in a campsite. The girl is outraged because she was hoping to spend the night in a hotel. The police are no longer happy that they took the museum worker with them. Hank finds the severed head of a moose. He picks it up and drops it in the boat. Kelly slaps him for throwing the moose head at her. She slaps him again when he responds that he didn't throw it at her. She also shuts off Jack when he tries to intervene. They reach the camping area set up for them. Kelly gets one tent to herself. Jack questions her about why she was sent to investigate this case when a helicopter with skids arrives. Kelly tells Jack that the person in the chopper is Hector Sear, a wealthy mythology professor and crocodile enthusiast who has worked with her at the museum. 
Hank appears at that moment and expresses his doubts about a crocodile being in Maine. Hector Sear gets off his helicopter and barrels right through into the action, but not before recognizing Kelly. Hank tries to check him, but he brushes him aside. No one but Hector believes that crocodiles can live in the salty waters of this lake, but the crazy Hector can't be persuaded. Then, the company goes to search for the mysterious monster. They head out in two canoes, Hector and Jack in one and Kelly and Hank in the other. Hector has a device that scans for sound frequency underwater. Hank voices his reservations again, and Hector explains that big crocodiles have recently been migrating north. Suddenly they see a disturbance in the water in front of them. Hank says it is being made by scared white perch, but what has scared the fish? Then the boat that contains Hank and Kelly is overturned due to a strong jolt from under the water. They end up in the water, but soon manage to get into Hector and Jack's boat. Having reached the shore, Kelly reports to and asks for assistance from US wildlife, but they don't seem to believe her and aren't going to send anyone. A female sheriff's deputy finds a decomposing human toe. Hector pronounces that the toes must have been swallowed. He says that this proves the existence of a crocodile in the lake. He adds that the croc is a keystone species. Jack further explains that a keystone species affects the whole ecosystem. As evening sets over the lake, they hold a small party in one of the tents. Hank finds two of his deputies digging a hole. When he asks, they say Hector paid them to dig it. Hank comes in, stops the music and confronts Hector. Hector explains that crocodiles can be a bit daring and venture out to land in response to noise. Hank sends everyone to their tent. Before he leaves, he tells Hector that he is mentally unstable. Hector replies with a tongue-in-cheek statement about Hank's origins. Kelly tells Jack about skipping stones in a lake by her grandfather's house as a kid. Jack advises her to keep away from the lake, but she argues that she didn't come on the expedition to roast marshmallows. The conversation circles back to the reason Kelly is out in Maine. She tells Jack the truth about the situation in the office with her boss Kevin and her friend and co-worker, Myra, and how she was sent here to cool the tension. Jack still says that that isn't a good reason to be out here and suggests she stays in town. Kelly insists that she wants to be a part of whatever is going on. Jack tells her to be ready by 7 a.m. and heads back to his tent. The young people feel the spark between them. Hank comes out to relieve himself and hears a sound in the bushes. He stalks to the spot with his revolver out. He discovers that it is Hector and reprimands him for sneaking around in the night like that. Hector responds that he is laying a trap that could help them catch the crocodile. Their noise wakes the others up. Jack sternly warns Hector not to interfere or he will have to leave, while Kelly defends his obsession with crocodiles. The girl explains that Hector is an expert on crocodiles, he considers these animals to be godly and always looks for them. When everyone returns to their tents, Hank falls into one of Hector's traps. Dawn finds the whole party in a motored boat on the lake. Hector and Jack are going to dive in, and Hank and Kelly will remain on the boat. They plan to use recorded crocodile hatchling sounds to attract the crocodile. Hank doesn't understand why they need to stay under the water if the crocodile swims up. After all, Matt Lawson became the monster's victim right when he was underwater. But Hector and Jack don't listen to him and start diving. At the bottom of the lake they find a horse. Meanwhile, Kelly and Hank discuss Hector. Hank insists that he is mentally unstable, while Kelly talks about his experiences with crocodiles around the world. Underwater, Hector and Jack split. On the surface, something tugs at the anchor, almost overturning the boat. Kelly falls into the water because of this but is eventually rescued. As she is pulled into the boat, Jack appears right under her and is pulled in too. Jack tells the others that he and Hector took separate paths when Kelly asks about the crocodile lover. Kelly sees bubbles on the lake's surface a short way off and calls the attention of the others. They motor to that area and pull out Hector. As the deputy on board pulls the device that makes the hatchling sounds, something jumps out of the water and decapitates him. Kelly screams. The next scene shows Hank finalizing his report to the police. Kelly is obviously shaken by what happened and Jack checks up on her. Hector also commiserates with Hank, but the tension between the two men ends up rearing its head. Hank tells him that it is better that they don't speak, but as he walks away, he is caught by another of Hector's traps. Kelly and Jack meet them in this situation. Hector tells Hank to promise he won't hurt him if he frees him from the trap. Hank agrees, but after they untrap him, he picks up a stick and chases after Hector. Jack chases after them to stop the two men from fighting. As Hector turns to fight back, a bear runs in their direction. Just as it stops and gets up on its hind legs, the crocodile comes out of the water and pulls it in. The whole party is shaken by what they have just witnessed. They search the internet for information about the crocodile. Kelly says that the crocodile is Asian. The discussion around the origin of the crocodile spirals into a war of words and then a fists between Hank and Hector. Hank knocks Hector down. Jack and Kelly help him up. The two men head back to their tents, still bickering. Kelly notices a wound on Jack's hand and invites him to her tent to help him take care of it. Jack gets Kelly to admit that she's having a good time. She says it's because she is finally in the middle of something instead of only seeing it on the news. Meanwhile, Hector and Hank watch the video of a crocodile attacking what looks like a bison. Hector says that there's a crocodile of similar size in India but admits that he doesn't know why this one is here. 
Hector's helicopter is seen leaving the lake. Meanwhile, the rest of the group is exploring the surrounding woods. They find a gigantic paw print. Meanwhile, Hector lands at another part of the lake, where he believes the crocodile lives. While trying to lift the print, a severed head lands at Kelly's feet. She freaks out and laments her bad luck with severed heads. Jack is trying to calm her down when he sees the old lady that lives beside the lake taking a cow out to the lake while the crocodile is waiting patiently in the water. He hands his binoculars to Kelly, who in turn gives it to Hank. The old lady leaves the cow at the lake shore and the crocodile comes and gets it. They go to question the woman. She tells them that she has been feeding the crocodile for six years. She also tells them that the crocodile ate her husband two years ago. Although she argues that she hasn't committed any crime, Hank says that she could be prosecuted for lying to them. He puts her under house arrest and tells her to wait until the police arrive. Meanwhile, Deputy Sharon Gare, whom Hector brought along on a short trip to the supposed home of the crocodile, tries to stop him from diving into the dangerous waters. When she fails, she radios Hank to report to him. Hector surfaces some meters from the helicopter and turns around to find himself face to face with the reptilian predator. He remarks about feeling a bit foolish and admits that this crocodile is different from the others. He manages to back up to the helicopter and into it. As they try to ascend, the crocodile catches one of the skids in its mouth. Sharon fires a few rounds at it with her revolver before it lets go. When Hector and Sharon return to where the others are, Jack scolds him for putting his and the deputy's lives in danger and grounds him. Hector is offended and storms off to his tent. Kelly goes in to talk with him. She gets him to promise not to go into the water again. As she leaves, he tells her that they cannot let the crocodile be liquidated. She goes out and asks Jack what would happen to the crocodile. He says that US wildlife and Florida fish and game would be at the lake in three hours, and they should start packing. Hector comes out to back her up. Jack eventually admits that the crocodile will be liquidated because nothing over 30 feet has ever been trapped. Hector manages to convince Jack to try to capture it first, stating that if the plan goes wrong, they could always use Hank's gun to finish it. He wants this to be done before the Florida guys arrive because he is sure they will finish it. The next scene shows one of the old lady's cows strapped to the underside of Hector's chopper with a long rope. The old lady threatens to sue them, but they aren't bothered. Apparently, the plan is to lure the crocodile out of the water with the cow and into a net by the shore. Jack and Kelly follow on a boat at first and later watch with binoculars from land. Meanwhile, Hank assembles his gun. The old lady tells a deputy sitting on her front porch that she hopes the crocodile will come out victorious. Just as they are about to give up, Hector picks up movement with the radar on the chopper. Everyone is ordered back into the park trucks. Jack then instructs Hector to lead the crocodile to land. As it approaches, Hector slowly moves the helicopter with the cow partly in the water to land. Just before the crocodile pounces, he pulls up, and the croc rears up, exposing its belly to a shot of tranquilizer from those in the truck. The helicopter starts to wobble and Hector lets go of the cow. However, this doesn't stop the helicopter from crashing into the water. Jack instructs Hank and the others back on land to exchange the tranquilizing guns for their rifles. Hector eventually pushes the helicopter's cockpit door out. To Hank's relief, Jack tells Hector not to get into the water yet. He adds that he should look out for the crocodile. Suddenly, the crocodile surfaces in a spray of water. Hector panics and falls into the water. Hank jumps down from the truck and runs into the water till he is almost knee deep. He ignores Kelly's call to get back. Hector eventually clambers back up the helicopter without incident. Hector sees the crocodile just a moment before it surfaces right in front of Hank. Hank shoots but loses his footing. With his shot going high, the crocodile snaps at him as he staggers back to the truck. The truck drives off a bit with the crocodile at its heels and everyone shooting at it. Kelly falls out of the truck when it goes over a bump. The truck stops and the others get out. The crocodile faces Kelly. Jack shoots at it to distract it. It eventually turns away from Kelly but uses its tail to sweep her off her feet. Jack's bullets finish, and the croc turns back to Kelly. She backs off towards the water, and the croc follows. Hector shouts to her to swim towards him. She turns her back to the crocodile and swims towards the chopper. With the crocodile close behind her, Hector instructs her to go underwater. She obeys and the crocodile follows her. Underwater, Kelly holds on to an old stump at the bottom of the lake. The crocodile swims around her. As she tries to surface, her leg is caught in a net. Back at the truck, Jack regrets the decision to save Hector. The crocodile takes the stump in its mouth in a bid to reach Kelly. It shakes the stump, and Kelly uses the momentum to free her leg from the net. She surfaces, and Hector pulls her up to the down helicopter. As they look around for the crocodile, it bursts through the doors of the helicopter on the other side and tries to reach them. They both jump in the water and are helped to land by Jack and Hank. They realize that the croc is now trapped in the wreckage of the helicopter. Jack wants Hank to shoot it, but Hector begs him not to. The crocodile dives towards land in a last effort to escape the helicopter. That is its last significant action as the tranquilizers kick in. Jack still wants Hank to finish it, but Hector and Kelly plead until Jack takes a tranquilizer gun and shoots it again. Suddenly, another crocodile attacks Hector, but he manages to wriggle away. Hank wastes no time in shooting the second croc.
At that moment, U.S. wildlife officials arrive on the scene. As they go to inspect the trapped crocodile, the bait cow walks away from the lake in the foreground. Jack says goodbye to the others. Hector is taken away in an ambulance while Hank follows him. Kelly kisses an obviously emotional Hank on the cheek just before he leaves with the ambulance. Jack and Kelly leave the lake together in his truck. The next scene shows the old lady feeding bread to baby crocodiles. And the movie ends with the trapped crocodile being transported on the back of a trailer truck. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.